Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thanks for tuning in. Guess what showed up at the shop yesterday? If you guessed the new transmission from Monster Transmission, you would be correct. Well done you. More specifically, this is a 4L60E that is gonna be going in my ETCG dad's truck project. Monster Transmission put this thing together. They sent it with some stuff in addition to just the transmission. They also sent a dipstick. They sent a box of miscellaneous parts, which included a transmission mount. Uh, they also sent this uh, Thor torque converter and a whole bunch of transmission fluid, synthetic transmission fluid to go into here, as well as a transmission cooler, which is sitting over on the bench and a transmission controller, which is also sitting over on the bench because I was checking that stuff out, looking at how to wire that stuff up, which is what we're gonna do today. Uh, but why don't we go check out that other stuff, but I'm really excited about this new transmission. It looks ready to go. Here is the cooler that Monster sent with the transmission. It is a perfectly fine, adequate transmission cooler. The thing that I kind of don't like is uh, just the attaching rubber lines to this. Uh, it'll probably work fine. This is also smaller and lighter than the one I had already ordered, which is sitting right next to it here, which is the B&M cooler. So this, there's a bit more cooling ability with it, especially if I'm gonna be towing with this truck, which I probably will from time to time. Having a transmission cooler with as much cooling capacity as possible, I like that idea. Also, I didn't like the idea of, or how this would attach. Now, this is all perfectly fine, but the way you attach these is you run these zip tie like things through the radiator fins and these fins and attach it all together. It is easy to install. I just don't like two metal parts, sensitive metal parts like this touching each other. Also, these are heat exchangers. I don't want to put one heat exchanger right on top of the other heat exchanger. I'd like a little airspace there. In fact, that's the reason why all these fins are here. All those fins are there to create more surface area to dissipate more heat. You put it on top of something else that's also making heat, which in this case will be the condenser. That didn't seem like a good idea to me. So I'm going to make it hard on myself and I'm gonna install this bigger transmission cooler. Like I said, that one would work just fine. This one I just think would work out a little better for my own peace of mind. Over here I have the new transmission controller. So this is a computer that just controls the transmission. It's a CompuShift, uh, intelligent shifting as it says. In addition to the computer, it also came with this wiring harness that plugs into it, it's fused, and it has other inputs and outputs depending upon what setup you have. So if you have an existing ECU, uh, this can connect to some of the energy management system. Also, uh, reading through, it has the capability to connect directly to the CAN uh, within your current setup if you wanted to. And I don't know if this eliminates the need for all these other connections or not. Also, it seems to have a main fuse uh, in line. But at the very least, it needs power and ground and a TPS signal, which I believe are the only things that I'm gonna be hooking up out of this harness in addition to the uh, speed sensor coming out of the transmission. It's a little tricky for me because my speedometer is GPS, so it's all self-contained inside the gauge unit. So I really don't have a speed sensor output signal I, I checked uh, that I can put into this or utilize this for. I thought about keeping the speed sensor signal around uh, that's an output of this system for the possibility of reconnecting my cruise control at some point. I wondered if the speed, speed sensor signal output from this could run that cruise control. I don't know for sure. We'll find out someday, but right now I just wanna get this thing in the truck and running. This CompuShift has Bluetooth capability. So I'm able to tie into this via Bluetooth, which is set up when you initially set the thing up. It just so happens that I have a tablet that is Bluetooth that connects to my engine controller. So I'll be able to control both the transmission and the engine from the same controller, which I think is awesome. It also has this micro USB connection up here. And as well, it has uh, some LED indicators, I believe below this, because they talk about going into LED mode. I don't know if this will flash codes or whatever, but you can either connect this directly with this micro USB or via Bluetooth. They also have this uh, packet of miscellaneous uh, connections and components. And one of those things is this little plug, which I believe is for the micro USB in the controller. Well, you got to work at it, but it goes in. And this can be mounted virtually anywhere. They just don't want it near the exhaust. You can even mount this under the vehicle. They want it. I guess it's good for water down to like a couple of feet or something like that. So it can be exposed to the elements, although I wouldn't necessarily do that. There's also this small hole in the back I think you should be aware of. I think this is so that this can equalize pressure inside of here. So I would do what I could not seal this up, 
but do what I could to try to keep moisture and everything out of there. I have a place in mind to mount it in the engine compartment. You can also mount it under a seat. You, you can mount this a lot of places. They say that you can mount it in the engine compartment, just be careful of exhaust and heat. This over here is where my cruise control was formerly mounted. Uh, I'm leaving it off there for now. I thought about mounting this here in place of the cruise control, but as I stated, I might want to add cruise control at some point. So I think mounting this down here like this is gonna be what I'm gonna do. I, I think those three mounting points will be more than be more than sufficient. So I won't have this one and I'll still be able to get down into this. The way the connector goes on is it actually goes in this direction or else I'd turn it around and mount it this way. But if I did it that way, the wires would come out and go around and that would look, well, um, untidy. I think this will be easier without the washer jug in the way, but before I go there, just get a rough idea of where it wants to live. So I'm just gonna put a little dot for the back, just so that I know that's as far back as it goes. And then take this winch washer bot off. I already disconnected the hose and cleaned this thing out. I'm just gonna use these self-tapping screws that I've used before. I didn't want to just run it all down with that impact, but the stack of washers seems to keep this from binding up against that uh, little piece of the body that's coming out. Let's get this uh, transmission cooler mounted to the front of the truck, which happens to be sitting on my workbench. I assure you that it will go back on the truck, but yes, that is the front of the truck. This is the AC condenser right here. This is my pass through. This is where the AC lines come and connect to the condenser. I don't know if I'm gonna to have to make this larger, which I could. Um, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, it might not be a bad idea just to have this a bit larger to run the transmission lines through, but I'm gonna run two new hard lines from the transmission to this point, and I'm gonna have them pointing straight out like this, and I'm gonna put on compression fittings to change it over to dash six. I'm gonna use 90 degree fittings to run it over to the cooler, which I plan to mount in this area just like that. As stated, I don't like the idea of just mounting this directly up against the condenser like this. I could, but I don't like that. I want a little bit of airspace between the two, and I think I know how I'm gonna accomplish that. This is the cooler that I'm using, and I got it from Summit. I'll link it in the description. I went digging through my scrap, and I found this eighth inch by half inch steel that I'm gonna use that I think is perfect for this. Uh, yes, it does have a little flex to it, but I'm not gonna be too worried about that. However, it's like the perfect size, it seems, to match up with those holes. Whenever I fab something, serviceability is always in my mind. I'm thinking, one day I may have to remove this condenser. So this is removable. If I make it so that the transmission cooler is not removable, well, I'm kind of screwing myself if I end up needing to replace a condenser, as I said. So not only do I want to make it so that I can mount this in here, but I want to make it so that it can be removed um, if need be. And what I thought was, is I take this, bend this over to 90 degrees, fasten it up in here, and fasten it down here. But it's kind of wide, the transmission cooler that is, so I can, I can do that there. But over on this side, I'm gonna have to fasten to this, which would be a shorter run. You can still do it, it's not impossible. But in order to fit this in here, one's gonna come down here and one's gonna come down over here. Now what I've already done is I've taken the uh, front clip plastic clip that goes over the front of this to make sure that there's enough room for this. I did this first and there's plenty of room in this area. The grill sticks out to about here. So the actual front of the truck will be probably about that far away. But this will be nicely positioned and probably cooler than anything else here. I'll give myself probably, yeah, about that much should do it. Give myself a 90 degree bend here.
boy, I was going to put this here. So I want my bend somewhere around there. That'll work nicely. I just need to come in and uh, trim it down. I just realized it's going to be interesting trying to get the screws in here because I'm going to turn this around the other way. So in other words, this will be in here like this. I'll have to run the screws up from the back side. I guess we'll worry about problems when problems are problems. And I'm going to drill the holes and I'm going to mount this first before I do the next part. Or maybe I'll just check it. I think that'll work nicely. Maybe over just a little bit more. I'm seeing over here this other side. I don't want to get into that piece that's rolled over right there. So I want to try to come over to the left as far as possible. I just need to hold it in place for the moment because before this is all said and done, these are coming off and getting painted. So I'm really just lining everything up. Taking stock of what I have left, and I have just enough left to do a couple of bends and do this exact same thing. I was originally thinking I'd attach to here, but now I'm thinking that I'm gonna remove that and attach behind it. Uh, so I have something similar to what I have here. Now I just need to figure out how far over I need to go. And it looks like I'll be right on that bend. Like that would be the middle, which isn't very helpful because it's black on black. I should have got my other marker, but yeah, pretty much right there on that weld. <laughs> Not ideal. Or I can lay it up against this one. I think I'll do that. That worked out. WD-40, continuous spray. It kind of has to go in at that angle because it's right on the edge underneath here. If I went straight through, it would kind of straddle the two pieces of metal here and I can't do that. I'm gonna go get that middle piece just so I can see where it lives. This is gonna work awesome. That'll work. I don't want it touching that. We'll bring it down a little. It was touching this and I didn't want it to touch that in case it moves or something. I 
I just got to thinking that after I paint this, my marks for up aren't going to be visible. So I thought an easy thing to do would be to just scar it. I'm just going to scar it towards the top. And this will be top. That's top. That'll show up under paint. As long as we're at it. In fact, that means left side. I'm gonna drill these holes ever so slightly larger. In fact, I went up, I think, two drill bit sizes for this. And I'm doing this because I don't have the fasteners that I'm gonna be using to fasten this yet, number one. But number two, uh, if I'm a little bit off, a little bit larger hole will allow me a little bit of wiggle room. But this has some flex and it'll be fine, but I'm just being extra cautious by drilling a slightly larger hole. In fact, just wanna make sure that, yeah. I don't think that's gonna compromise anything, being that large, especially once the fasteners run through it. That'll work. These fittings turn this into dash six, and I'm trying to think of what this opening is, but if nothing else, if you look up that part number, it will give you exactly what I'm using. So it's a reducer, it's gonna take it down to dash six AN so that I can, uh, like I said, run a little bit of steel braided over to this. I'm going a little overkill on this, but I kinda of like to overbuild because that way I'm not regretting later on that I didn't do something more. Overbuilding makes it awesomer. At least I hope this is the correct size. And I hope it's NPT. I'm just gonna check it real quick. If it is, I'll put some thread tape on it. Yeah, because there's no, yeah, it's NPT. There's no O-ring or anything on here. You hold it in your hand like this and you roll away from yourself. Yeah, so now when you screw it in, it won't unwind as you screw it in. So hold it in your hand like this and roll away from yourself. Still protected. There's some sharp stabby edges like down in there and there usually is when you do stuff like this and I just like to clean those up. I do that with a wire wheel. As long as we're over here, I brought the old AC line through. Uh, so I've got one that's gonna come in and connect like that, and another one that's gonna come down and connect here. And I'm still gonna have two metal transmission lines coming through here. So looking at that, I just think it would be easier now, it's on the bench, just to make this hole a bit larger, both upper and lower, or just in general, just open this whole thing up to accommodate more stuff. I should have done this long ago, but once again, thank you, Shane. But yeah, I should have done this in the beginning before I did any fabrication or anything in this neighborhood. And by the way, I came back in here with a little bit of paint and just shot it through the bare metal. Not that it's not going to be bare metal again, but yeah, it'll help keep corrosion down just a smidge. All right, here's what I'm thinking. Oh, uh, you know what, there's something down here so I won't be able to do that. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's something up here too. I just had a thought. There's a giant radiator on the other side of this. At least I'll have the extra room to move stuff around. If it's behind the radiator, I'll put these lines in before the radiator. Either way, this hole's getting bigger. I don't want to leave rough edges. It almost looks natural. Better holes for a better tomorrow. And we're back to the electrical portion of wiring up our CompuShift. I just spoke with Mike at CompuShift and that dude knows what he's talking about. So if you end up calling CompuShift, I suggest asking for Mike. And Mike just cued me into a lot of things about this harness that weren't correct. And he's sending me the right stuff so I can correct it. And I just learned something else about this CompuShift system that I really like. And that's that you can hook up a momentary switch, hold it for three seconds and change transmission modes. Say if you have a pickup truck like this, you can switch it into a towing mode and then back to a normal mode or a race mode, something like that, which I knew I could mess around with it with the app, but having a momentary switch that I could just push on the dash and boom, I'm ready to go. I like that, three seconds later. This is the CAN bus connection. So what this is gonna allow me to do is I would have had to tie into the throttle position sensor and tied into the tachometer signal because the computer, the copy shift needs that in order to calculate shift points. Now I don't have to do that because this CAN, this CAN bus is going to go from that computer over to my Elderbrock Pro Flow 4 system. Now this, I've come to find through Mike, who's very knowledgeable about this stuff. This is the old connector. He was asking me how old my Elderbrock Pro Flow 4 system was. And I said, for me, it's only about three weeks. But then I think about it, this could have been sitting on a shelf for a while. So this is the old connector. They don't use these anymore. The connector that they use now is apparently this gray connector instead. So what he's doing is he's making me a new one of these pigtails because, I don't know if you can see it down there, it's, I can't quite reach it, but there's that black connector hanging down off those two uh, tan wires. So that connector is going to go from there and come over and terminate into one of these connectors that I can just connect into this. In fact, he's sending me a new end for this so I can change this into this. So these computers will be able to talk to each other in the sense that they'll share TPS and tachometer information so that the copy shift can calculate those shift points but very happy to have that stuff worked out and there's a couple more things i want to share with you this is the transmission side of my harness this main connector goes right here on the back of the transmission so i'll just be able to plug this in and this will you know tell all the solenoids to do things what i need to do next is connect to this which is the speed sensor because it's going to need to know how fast it's going in order to calculate shifts once again this is the TISS connector, the TIS connector. This connector goes up in here and connects, but it's not supposed to. This is supposed to go to something completely different. What needs to connect to this is this, the TOSS, the T-O-S-S -S, on here. And apparently I got the wrong adapter that's supposed to go from here to here. This is the old GM style uh, speed sensor connector. And I needed the new GM's speed center connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, um, probably back to here and snip these wires and take this connector, which I know plugs in and connect these wires to here. Speed sensors, it doesn't matter what wire gets hooked up to what, it's just a signal coming out. So I asked Mike about this and he said I could do that. So I'm going to cut basically this out of the harness. It's no longer needed and uh, cap these wires off, but then graft these wires onto this. Uh, so that I can just plug this in. So there'll just be two connections going to the transmission. There'll be this major one and this one going to the speed sensor. The other part of the harness is going to go away completely. I asked the question, what's the yellow wire for? The yellow wire for goes to a transfer case. So if you have a four-wheel drive, this is the signal coming out of the transfer case. That's what this yellow wire is for. Also something I don't need, also something that's going away. Here is that cooler, the finished mounting of it. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's exactly where I wanted it to be. A couple of notes on this. They say you can mount this sideways, like I have it here, this way or this way, 
or you can mount it with the inlet and outlet facing upwards, but they don't want you to mount it so that it's facing downwards. And I never let you know exactly which cooler I was using. This is the super cooler. It's the 70266. Uh, so this one's a little bit larger. And I got this cooler from Summit. I'll link it down in the description for you. Normally, when you uh, mount a transmission cooler, they may be smaller and you actually want to run the cooler lines through the radiator uh, transmission cooler and then into your additional cooler so you have as much cooling as possible. Since I don't have that option with my new radiator, this is the only cooler I have, which is why uh, the super cooler was where I ended up. But uh, here are the transmission lines. These are just stock transmission lines. I just cut one of the ends off there just to see um, I, I can't remember what I was checking, but anyway, I'm going to run these in. Now, the other important thing to note about these, I'm going to hook this up to the transmission and have these exit right through this hole. And then, as I said, I'm going to run lines from here over to these hard lines when they exit here. One thing that they say is that if you're going to mount the cooler like this, that the inlet is the bottom. So the inlet's gonna be the bottom and the outlet's gonna be the top. And I believe on the transmission, the way it is, is the lower port is the outlet and the upper port is the inlet on the transmission, just to give you an idea of what goes where. So if we're on the transmission and these are the transmission lines, this would be the outlet, this would be the inlet. So going to, coming back from cooler. Special shout out to Monster Transmission on this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the introduction of my Monster Transmission and the installation of some of the supporting systems, the transmission cooler and also the transmission controller unit. Uh, I'm putting this in here now because in the videos that are coming after this, I will be installing the engine transmission in the truck and I wanted to give you a bit of backstory. But rest assured, I will be back with uh, how I hooked everything up, how I set everything up, uh, driving the truck and the transmission, how it shifts, all that kind of stuff. That will be covered after those videos are posted. So rest assured, there is more information coming on this monster transmission. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com. There will be additional links, including a link to ericthecarguy.com, uh, to the parts, tools, and things that I used in this video. Also, additional videos on ETCG Dad's truck. I want to thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.